Well, hey fans, welcome back to another movie review, and today we're going to review Godzilla Minus One. So, Godzilla Minus One is an epic kaiju film directed by Takahashi Yamazaki, I believe I'm pronouncing that name correctly, and it stars the likes of uh, Rinosuke uh, Kamiki, Minami Hamabe, and Yuki Yamada, and many other names, many other names, you know. And this is another Toho Godzilla film. And this one is not connected to the new, you know, legendary Godzilla films that are made by America. This one is a Japanese modern Godzilla film. And modern meaning it came out today. The story is actually set in a post-World War II Japan. And it follows this pilot. He's a kamikaze pilot. His name is Koichi. And he does not go through with his mission to bomb Pearl Harbor, a suicide mission basically. He lands on this island where he meets these engineers and while they're on this island, they are attacked by Godzilla. But it's not Godzilla as you know him. He's like the size of a T-Rex and Koichi and like this other engineer, like the only survivors. And he takes this guilt back to Japan. He couldn't save these engineers. He didn't go through his mission. And now he's in a Japan that has been wrecked by war. And you know, he meets this young lady who has this baby that's not hers, and they end up forming a family. And that is the key to the story. It's a family movie. And it's not just some action adventure epic beat em up. It's actually a story about this pilot and this family that he forms. And Godzilla just happens to be in the background of the story. And that's what I think I liked about it so much. Of course, it is in Japanese. So if you don't like reading subtitles, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. This is not the film for you. But it shouldn't matter because it is really beautiful. And it's really epic. The score, the score is pretty amazing. And you have, you know, those classic Godzilla themes that are in there that play when Godzilla appears on the screen. And it just kind of takes me back to my childhood because I remember watching those old movies at my grandma's house. And that's what this feels like. And the Godzilla that you see in this movie, one, they give him that whole extra backstory that I don't think has ever been mentioned before, that he used to be small and has gotten bigger over time. And this one, of course, he's not... He's like classic Godzilla. He's slow, he's powerful, and he shoots a beam and he walks away. He's not running or anything like that or fighting King Kong. And I like the way he appeared on screen. His atomic breath seems more deadly than any atomic breath I've ever seen any Godzilla do. Because of course the tail, sorry, of course the tail charges up and you see the spikes on his uh back and tail they start to turn blue but in this one they kind of jut out as they go higher and higher and then he like sucks in a lot of air and then he releases the beam and it goes quiet and then there's a giant atomic explosion that is like a nuclear bomb and i really enjoyed that i thought it was well done and well prepared especially with the budget they apparently made this film for i think it was like 12 million dollars to look this good Looks better than Netflix stuff, and they have like $200 million budgets. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. Um, there are some aspects of the story that I didn't care for. Uh, one main instance, there's a character who, when Godzilla attacks the city and creates the explosion, they are blown away by the explosion. They've already survived this crazy train thing with Godzilla, but the explosion happens and they are blown away. And you are led to believe that they died. And at the end of the film, you find out that this character survives. And... Because the film is great. And if that character died sacrificing themselves, it would have worked for the overall story. There are some aspects of this film, of course, that you've also seen other places. It is a modern adaptation, so they do kind of, you can tell they kind of took inspiration from more modern films. Namely, The Dark Knight Rises. There's this whole scene involving an old plane that is being rebuilt, and you know, Kamikaze pilots, they didn't have ejector seats because their mission was to die. So they retrofit this new plane it has uh, an ejector seat, and they make mention of that right before this mission to kill Godzilla. And I'll get back to killing Godzilla. So they um, retrofit this plane with an ejector seat and all these other missiles and stuff. And of course, that comes into play at the end. 
and it's just like the Dark Knight Rises. So, but they don't. It's not like a secret like the Dark Knight Rises. It's, you, it's clear the character survives. Um, but the way Godzilla is being attacked in this film is great. It's with science. Like I said, it's not like another kaiju or some kind of giant laser. It's like, look, Godzilla is a sea creature. He's mostly in the sea. Using science, we can make him sink and crush him. And if he somehow survives that, we can do this to him and like blow him up. And it's great. And when you see that scene go down, the tension about if their plan is going to succeed, it's pretty great. It's palpable even. And I, I think that is the kind of difference in taking out a monster that we need more of. Not just, you know, giant robots or something like that. Just smart people. Smart people think of smart ways to take out these creatures. Um, and of course they allude to the fact that the type of creature that Godzilla is, he really can't be killed. So we may get a sequel that is directly tied to this with Godzilla returning. I do have to say this is probably my favorite foreign film of the year. Unless you want to count past lives. I'm not sure if past lives counts as a foreign film. Uh, but it's between those two. But like I said, the acting is also very well done. You know, stars in Japan, they are kind of like TV stars all around. Everybody gets a job to work on the film and they do their part. That's why you don't really know about like Japanese movie stars. There's no like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Keanu Reeves or anything like that. They all fulfill their role and they play it well. And the family that is formed in this movie, I, I just really enjoyed seeing two people come together to raise a kid that's not their own. Clearly there's some feelings there that are forming, but one of them is fighting those feelings because he doesn't think that he deserves this kind of happiness. And it, it really emotionally touched me and I think it will touch the rest of the audience as well. In terms of score, I think I'm gonna give Godzilla minus one, an excellent nine out of 10. It was an enjoyable film except for that one moment where they care to survive when they shouldn't have survived. This is definitely something you should go see whether you like subtitles or not. I definitely recommend you check it out in theaters if you can. IMAX, and I think it's out to purchase on home video now. So definitely check this movie out any way possible. I want to thank you again for joining me for a movie review. Remember you can find this video on YouTube and the website flickfrogllc.com slash flicksfrog. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. And please, pretty please, Make sure that you subscribe. And until next time, I'll be seeing you.